after a deal it did in 2007. And another is Ken Energy, which this week said it had received a $4.4 .4 billion tax demand. One it too is challenging, linked to a share trade in 2006. Both of these so-called retrospective tax claims have been held up as an example of why India is a hard place for foreign firms to do business. So will a deal be done? I met up with Ken India's chief executive Mayank Asher and began by asking just that. In any uh, country, as long as there's good dialogue, debate, India has a vigorous media and it's, uh, you resolve these things uh, through talking, through discussions. You go to courts as a last resort and that is not preferred. Uh, there are arbitration mechanisms, so I'm hopeful we can find a resolution uh, on this. The country has to uh, clearly be open to investment and investors need to feel welcomed. Uh, on the other hand, it has its rules and interpretations. Uh, so so it's, it's a balance and I'm hopeful that uh, this issue will get resolved. And, and I would say even the investors who went to China over the last 20, 30 years, uh, they had some growing pains because in a sense, you have two cultures. Um, and uh, you, you, both India's culture needs to evolve to be more open and the foreign investment culture need to evolve to respect that when they invest to some extent there are local rules uh, and you have to adapt and adopt versus use a, a particular cookie cutter formula that works in one country and just put, uh, put it in here. Over the last year the global price of oil has dropped nearly 70 percent. How much of an impact has that had in your business here? The oil price went from 120 to 60 dollars last year which was half and then it went again by half to $30. Uh, so it is very severe for us and all the oil and gas producers uh, in the world. Uh, but thankfully, our cost structure is truly world class. Uh, so we're still generating some positive cash flow, but clearly it is hurting countries and companies in our industry in a very, very severe way. The government here is considering many reforms in this sector. What would your top three uh, priorities be if you were to drop a wish list? If you look at gas prices today, uh, it is not an open market. Uh, but the government changes that they've done, it, they're moving towards that. And the ch I have empathy for the government because if it's truly opened up fully, there are segments of the society that cannot afford the world price of oil and gas. So the government has to find a way to subsidize the poor people who, for whom the energy is a necessity and still open up the price structure so that there is an incentive for investment, not only for domestic uh, companies, but uh, international companies. You struck oil in Rajasthan nearly two decades ago, which now accounts for about 23% of the domestic production. In your assessment, what is the energy demand in India like and how is it likely to grow? India will be the largest uh, growth uh, engine of oil demand of any other country in the world. Um, India will be consuming some 9 million barrels a day in a few decades from now. That is as big as the entire oil production from United States or Russia or Saudi Arabia. Um, so that's a huge demand. One more statistic. Uh, if you look at uh, oil import as a percentage of GDP, India today and in the future will be higher than any other nation in the world. So it's a strategic vulnerability and India will have to do both. It will have to produce more, uh, but also buy assets overseas. Mayan Kashir of Ken India talking to me earlier. Right, it's time now to take a short break. When we come back, guiding the way. The 